I'm joined by my TA Serenity for this fluid mechanics video about hydraulic radius. And fortunately, it's usually not too hard to calculate. You're just going to need the cross-sectional area of your channel and the wetted perimeter, that is the perimeter of the cross-sectional area, but only the part that is actually touching the boundary, not the open surface. Hydraulic radius is used in Manning's equation. Oh, shit, oh. oh suck. These problems can present themselves several different ways and that sometimes you may know the channel depth and then you need to use that to find the area. Other problems may work backwards and you'll be given the area and asked to find the channel depth. So in this video, we'll look at rectangular channels, trapezoidal channels, and circular channels, which is usually gonna be a partially filled pipe or culvert. So we'll do some of each version. You'll learn some major mind busters like the area of a rectangle. The most challenging part is probably finding the area of the segment of a circle. Usually area of curved surfaces require calculus, so this looks like it's gonna be pretty tough, but it's actually a lot easier than it looks. Starting off with the rectangular channel. Area over wetted perimeter. Area is base times height. There's that knowledge bomb. The wetted perimeter is then these three green surfaces. So it's not the entire perimeter of the area, only the portion of the perimeter that's actually touching something. The part exposed to the air, not included in wetted perimeter, which gives you for this rectangular channel, a hydraulic radius of 0.545 meters. All right, now for this trapezoid problem, we're gonna work it backwards and assume that we've already found the cross-sectional flow that's gonna be coming through this area. And we wanna find out what depth it's gonna sit in this trapezoidal shape. So start by breaking up the trapezoid into these three shapes, one rectangle, two triangles. The area of the rectangle is just four times D, base times height. The area of the triangle, one half, base times height. The height of these triangles is also D. The base takes a little bit of trigonometry. Tangent of that 30 degree angle is opposite over adjacent. The opposite of that 30 is D, the height. And then the adjacent is that horizontal base of those triangles. This works out to be a quadratic equation. So plugging it into my solver, there's two answers. One's negative, one's positive. Only the positive answer actually makes sense here. So 0.9 meters for the depth. To find hydraulic radius, area divided by perimeter. We started with the area, five. The perimeter is gonna be those three green lines added together, and we're ignoring the top open surface. So these diagonal green lines are the hypotenuse of that triangle, so we're gonna use a little bit more trigonometry along with that depth. So using this smaller triangle I drew off to the side, you can see that with a hypotenuse of D divided by sine 30, when finding that vertical part of the depth, you take the hypotenuse times sine 30 equals D, so this answer will work out. And for this one, the hydraulic radius works out to 0 0.6 Five, eight meters. Okay, circular channel. Solving for area of the flow through this circular channel is something that's probably really easy to you or impossibly hard if you don't know how. And if it rings any bells from a long time ago, this sort of shape where you slice off a circle is called a segment. So we're finding the area of a segment of a circle. So we can first find the entire area of that whole pi piece is just pi r squared, which is the whole area of the circle, times the ratio of theta over 360, which is essentially the percentage of how much of that circle is contained. And so in order to get only the area of the water flowing through the pipe, we'll additionally have to subtract the area of this red triangle. And since dealing with right triangles is always easier than dealing with any other kind of triangle, I'm gonna cut this one right down the middle and make a right triangle. And I already know two sides of this triangle. One is the hypotenuse because that's the radius of the pipe. And then also 0.4 because the radius is one and 0.6 is how deep the water is. And that's gonna let us find the angle because cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that gives us the full angle or half angle, whichever one we wanna use next. Okay, so rearranging, we get that this angle theta over two is 66.4 degrees. To find the area of that triangle, we'll need to find the base of the triangle, which we can get with sine since the base is opposite that theta over two angle. And so that horizontal distance of the triangle, 0 0.917 meters. So the total red triangle, that is both of the small right triangles together, 0 0.3666. So I get an area of about 0 0.8. And as a double check to make sure this makes sense, the area of the whole circle is gonna be pi, so 3.14. This 130 degree pi wedge is about one third of that circle. So that would be an area of about 1.05 in the entire wedge. And then after after subtracting some part for the triangle, a value of 0.8 seems to be about right. So to finish off hydraulic radius, area divided by wetted perimeter, we've got area. Wetted perimeter is gonna be the length of that green line. And similar to the same way we found the area of that red pie wedge as a ratio of the area of the wedge to the area of the whole circle, we'll do the same thing for perimeter, the ratio of that angular arc to the perimeter of the whole circle. The total perimeter of the circle is pi times diameter, 
So radius one, diameter two, two pi for the overall perimeter. And then the green portion only represents 132.8 degrees, which is double that angle of the smaller triangle, the 66.4, over 360 degrees for the whole triangle. Don't be too scared of the circular ones. They're really not that bad once you know how. If this video has helped you understand wetted perimeter and hydraulic radius, and you think other students would benefit from watching it, please hit the thumbs up so that this video will appear higher in search and it's easier for them to find it. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.